In 2014, Lockheed Martin's Skunk Work, the legendary outfit behind the SR-71 Blackbird, dropped a bombshell. A truck-sized compact fusion reactor that could power the world with clean, near-limitless energy. Picture the hype, a real-life arc reactor straight out of Tony Stark's playbook, promising to light up cities, propel spacecrafts to Mars, and make fossil fuels an antiquated memory. The pitch was electrifying. A 100-megawatt fusion machine, just 2 by 3 meters, leveraging a clever high-beta magnetic design to tame plasma hotter than the sun's core. Lockheed sold the world a dream of fusion power by 2020s, with prototypes already humming in their secretive labs. This technology was poised to revolutionize everything. Imagine powering 80,000 homes with a reactor smaller than a shipping container, or submarines and aircraft carriers running on deuterium and tritium, leaving no carbon footprint behind. The CFR's patented magnetic wizardry, cusps, mirrors and encapsulating fields promised to outsmart the bulky tokamaks lumbering toward fusion at a cost of billions. It could shrink energy scarcity, decarbonize the grid and even make interplanetary travel a commute. The world leaned in, ready for a new era. But then, like a magician's best trick, the CFR vanished. By 2021, Lockheed's fusion dream had quietly fizzled, with no prototypes, no data, and no explanation. The 2019 deadlines slipped, the 2,000-ton reality replaced the truck science fantasy, and skepticism grew as physics' harsh truths outpaced the hype. Was it a technical dead-end, a corporate pivot to safer defense contracts, or a classified project now humming in the shadows? Unlike the giant tokamaks used in fusion research, Lockheed's CFR used a different design, a magnetic mirror and cusp configuration. Instead of wrapping plasma around a donut-shaped loop, they designed a closed magnetic bottle that squeezes the plasma into the center using magnetic fields shaped like mirrors and cusps. This simpler, cylindrical design aimed to be smaller, lighter and more efficient. The big selling point, it could reach high beta conditions, meaning the plasma pressure would match the magnetic field pressure, allowing for more fusion reactions in a smaller space. In fusion reactors, there is always a fight going on. The plasma pressure wants to expand outward, while the magnetic field is trying to squeeze it in. The balance between these two forces is measured by a parameter called beta, the ratio of plasma pressure to magnetic field pressure. Low beta means the magnetic fields dominate, and you need huge magnets and massive structures to keep the plasma stable. High beta means the plasma pressure is comparable to the magnetic field pressure, so you can contain more energy with smaller magnetic fields in a smaller machine. Most fusion devices, like tokamaks, operate at low beta. They need gigantic magnetic coils to confine the plasma, because the magnetic field pressure has to be much stronger than the plasma itself. Lockheed's CFR flipped this idea on its head. Their design aimed for high beta operations, where the plasma itself helps hold its shape. Think of it like this. When applying pressure to a gas, the gas forces itself to the cusps of the magnetic field shape. So the gas pressure works in conjunction with the magnetic field, while tokamaks have to force the gas into a thin line. This is why they used a magnetic mirror and cusp field configuration. It could theoretically confine high beta plasma more efficiently than a tokamax toroidal loop. If it worked, you wouldn't need enormous magnets or structures. The payoff? A fusion reactor shrunk down to the size of a semi-truck trailer, producing 100 megawatts of power, enough for a city of 80,000 people, without the need for kilometer-scale facilities like ITER. To get fusion going, the CFR would inject a mix of deuterium and tritium into the chamber and heat it over 100 million degrees Celsius. They planned to use neutral beam injection, firing high-energy atoms into the plasma, which would transfer their energy through collisions, raising the temperature to fusion levels. To contain the super-hot plasma, the reactor used superconducting magnets, 
These generated powerful magnetic fields without overheating or consuming massive amounts of power. Since the CFR was designed for high beta plasma, the magnets could be placed closer to the reaction core, making the whole system more compact compared to traditional reactors. When fusion happens, energetic neutrons are released. These would pass through a magnetic field and hit a surrounding lithium blanket, generating heat. That heat would then drive a traditional steam turbine to produce electricity. The same basic principle as in conventional power plants, but powered by fusion instead of fossil fuels. Lockheed claimed this design could scale down fusion reactors to the size of a semi-truck trailer, around 20 tons, instead of the thousands of tons required for conventional designs. This would have made fusion practical for powering cities, military bases, ships, even aircraft, bringing cheap, clean energy wherever needed. In theory, it was a brilliant shortcut to fusion energy. In practice, well, that's where things got messy. When Lockheed Martin first revealed their compact fusion reactor, they promised nothing short of a revolution. Clean, limitless energy, a power plant the size of a shipping container, the kind of breakthrough that would change the world forever. But after a few flashy headlines, vague presentations and many patents filed, nothing. No working prototype, no energy revolution. The dream just faded away. So what happened? Why did this world-changing technology vanish without a trace? There are two possible answers. One is boring, but very likely. The other one is more interesting. Let's start with the boring one. It just didn't work. From patents and expert analysis, it is clear that Lockheed underestimated how hard it is to tame high beta plasma. That was the core of their design. Plasma so pressurized it could hold itself together better, needing smaller magnetic fields. In theory, it meant smaller, cheaper reactors. In practice, high beta plasmas are a nightmare. They are unstable, prone to bulging, twisting and escaping confinement. Lockheed's approach using magnetic mirrors and cusp fields had been tried before and failed. The same problems resurfaced, plasma simply leaked out and they couldn't reach the energy levels needed for a real fusion reaction. There was also no public evidence they ever got close to net energy gain, no Q bigger than one, not even a solid proof of concept reactor. Meanwhile, startups like Helion and TAE Technologies started making real measurable progress. The spotlight shifted and Lockheed's big promise quietly dissolved into R&D obscurity. Most likely, the CFR project was a costly experiment that hit the same physics brick wall as everyone else. Rather than admit defeat, Lockheed simply went silent. But then there is the other theory. The fun one. What if it actually worked? or at least worked well enough to scare the right people. Think about it. Lockheed's bread and butter is military contracts. A compact fusion reactor isn't just an energy breakthrough. It is a geopolitical weapon. Remote bases, warships, even aircraft powered independently of fossil fuels. That changes the entire global power dynamic. There's also the economic angle. Fusion power would disrupt trillion dollar oil and energy markets. Entire industries would collapse overnight. That is not the kind of shift that happens without pushback. And then there is national security. If Lockheed was even close to cracking compact fusion, the military might have stepped in, classified it, buried it under layers of secrecy until they could control how and when it gets used. In this view, the CFR didn't fail. It vanished because it was too valuable to leave it in the open. Of course, this is speculation. Maybe it really was just a failed R&D project. Or maybe, just maybe, it got a little too close to success for comfort. In the end, we are left with a familiar story. A big promise, a quiet retreat, and a lot of unanswered questions. Lockheed Martin sold us a dream. Whether it fizzled out or got locked away, we'll probably never know. But one thing is for sure. When you hear a defense contractor promise to change the world, remember, sometimes the world isn't ready to change.